Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is you are joining us. This is the Tulsa World Scene Section podcast. Uh, I'm joined today, as as often is the case, with my colleagues Jimmy Trammell and Lydia Fletcher uh, to talk about um, things that are coming up uh, in the Tulsa world and around the state and various various and assorted things. Um, one of which um, we're going to have a story this coming Sunday about um, Ed Galloway's Totem Pole Park, uh, which is in uh, Rogers County, um, about three miles east of Foyle on Route 66. Um, this is a, let's see, it was started in the late 1930s by a man named Ed Galloway, who had been teaching uh, what they call manual arts, like um, uh, woodworking and metalworking and that sort of thing, uh, at the Tulsa Boys Home in Sand Springs. And he retired uh, to this area in, uh, in, in Rogers County. And he started building um, a totem pole um, out of concrete painted it in latex paint that he would borrow from uh, his neighbors who had finished their painting and had stuff left over and created this 90 foot tall totem pole out in the middle of what then would be considered nowhere. Um, but uh, it was close enough to Route 66 that it started becoming a place to visit. And uh, over the years, he added to uh, the uh, this area so that now there, I believe there are 14 structures, concrete structures uh, built around this area. And uh, um, they have been recently refurbished uh, in a project led by um, uh, a native Tulsan who now lives in, in New York, uh, Aaron Turner, uh, to paint them in such a way that they will stay painted because of the paint that he used would uh, streak and fade. And and I, I, the first time I remember going there, they were in a, a pretty sad shape, state of affairs. So, um, but they're also doing a whole series of workshops throughout the month of, of August examining it from a historical perspective, how it fits into uh, Native American issues and uh, tourism and all, all, all kinds of things. We'll have all of that in in the Tulsa world. But I, I, I was curious, I, I have a feeling, Jimmy, you are very familiar with uh, the Ed Galloway totem pole. I, I've been there. And uh, doesn't every totem pole need a fiddle house, too? Because, uh, Lydia, there's, there's a fiddle house next to it where all these hand-carved fiddles and it used to be open all the time, but there was so much uh, vandalism and theft that the fiddles started walking off. And so they had to, I think, lock it up at nighttime, James, if I'm uh, correct, because yeah. they were all walking away. But it, it's great stuff like that gets refurbished because like, it's not on Route 66, but it's just a couple miles away. And it falls into all these uh, quirky, weird attractions that we have for not just Route 66 visitors, but for visitors, period, whether it's the Blue Whale in Catoosa or the Action Figure Museum in Paul's Valley. Um, I can't pronounce rural, but the Rural Museum, <laughs> Oklahoma Museum of Poetry in Locust Grove, Romp for short. Uh, uh, so we just, there used to be a bowling ball yard art thing for visitors in Nowata. I don't know if that's still around. Someone from Nowata needs to to get back with us and say, yes, the bowling ball yard art is still a thing. But it's well, just weirdness, Lydia, is what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 there, and there are, and that's one of the things that when I was talking with, 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 with Ms. Turner about this, you know, that is that while this is unique, um, uh, it, it, it's not entirely unheard of. I mean, there are these artist built environments all over the country. One of the most famous is in, uh, the Watts District, uh, no no relation, of uh, Los Angeles, uh, the Watts Towers by a man named Simon Rodia that are these found object 
things there it's huge and bizarre and it's been around for uh a long time and yeah you know, it, it it's kind of interesting that that he built a totem pole because of the more than 30 uh indigenous tribes and and nations that now live in Oklahoma none of them are totem builders hmm. um but they're but but that is very much a tradition for, of uh, tribes and nations uh, in the Northwest, and there he may have Alec Galloway may have heard about the uh, the totem pole park that was that was built in in Sitka, Alaska, uh, in the early 1900s, and that was one of his inspirations. That's one of the things they're going to be talking about. Um, Lydia, how are you with weird stuff like that? See. I uh, I feel like Oklahoma has so much more of that than Arkansas. Like Arkansas, we're called the natural state. I feel like a lot of our resources go towards like preserving the natural beauty that's in Arkansas. So what we're known for is awful, awful town names. Um, so we don't have wacky attractions. We have terrible town names. So first, there's Toad Suck, Arkansas in central arkansas it does frog races or toad races every year um there's flippin and you can go there and there's a church there that sells shirts saying i've been to the flippin church of christ Ooh. and it's a huge tourist attraction because people see those shirts and they absolutely lose it there's a town called 56 just spelled out um it's just a very like we have so many beautiful attractions. They also have weird names like Devil's Den State Park, um, Beaver Lake. These are all in Northwest Arkansas near me. Um, but for some reason, Arkansas just can't get their act together when it comes to naming things. And so it becomes almost like a comedy thing to have these ridiculous town names attached to whatever destination is there. Well, recap, somebody who's Arkansas been to Flippin. But somebody who's been to Flippin, Arkansas, and to that church, um, yeah, I, I know of what you speak. But uh, yes, I was like, yeah, you know exactly. So it's Beavis like, and Butthead would laugh at all those road signs on the way through Arkansas. But yeah, to, to recap, Arkansas is the natural state. Oklahoma is the unnatural state, right? Yeah, yeah, y'all have all of the structures and stuff, and we have all the terrible town names. So well, I think it's a good balance. We we do have a a a a town named IXL. How do you say that? IXL. Okay. And that's what it, it is. I and uh, that that's what I I think that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, watching uh, severe weather is such a, a popular spectator sport is that you learn a lot of really you know. They're, uh, uh, Oklahoma has its share of, of weird, uh, uh, of weird, weird names. So, but um, anyway, um, well, that's what that's what that's one of the things we have coming up this weekend. Um, uh, Lydia, what have you been working on for for uh, an upcoming issue of the Tulsa World? Yeah, so I don't have anything this weekend because um, for listeners of the podcast who've been here a while, I'm a summer intern. Um, my last week is next week. Very sad. So interns get to put together a special project and all of mine is due on Thursday. So I've been spending all of this week just getting all of my copy in. So my editors were very kind and were like, we want you to put your energy on that. You don't need to publish anything for the daily paper until Wednesday. And Wednesday's issue is going to be really fun. Um, because we're going to be talking about a very famous Ulaga musician, Zach Bryan. Um, he's obviously known worldwide, and while I didn't get to interview him, I did get to interview his dad, who has been very big in fostering the fan community around his son, and is actually going to be hosting some events before and after the Zach Bryan shows at BOK Center on the 11th and 12th. And so uh, I'm going to be giving more details on that. Essentially, there's going to be a pre-party and a post-party. The post-party does have a cover charge, but to my knowledge, the pre-party does not. Um, and he's been doing a really interesting thing where 
if fans decide they want a tailgate outside of the show before, you know, the door is open, he will find local musicians who have covered his son's songs and give them a chance to perform either their original work or maybe some covers tied in that I actually need to ask for more clarification on. But regardless, um, there's going to be performances there'll be free drinks. He specified it's like a very fam family friendly event. So like water, Gatorade, that kind of thing. Um, but for those who want to drink after the show, there is a like $10 cover charge for an event happening after. So. Uh, Jimmy, what have you got coming up this weekend? Got a little music as well on Friday. Uh, C. Thomas Howe, now known as Tommy Howe, was of course in The Outsiders in 1982. It came out in 83, but they filmed it in 82. He's pivoted from actor to music. Uh, one of his songs is called Hell of a Life. And it's really neat that it's basically a filmography because it mentions that he was yelling Wolverines and fighting the Russians and uh, was a greaser in 68. And it's really a cool song. But he's coming back to Tulsa to perform at Venue Shrine. We've got an interview with him that runs, I think, on Friday. And then on uh, Sunday, we've got an update on an Oklahoma author. Allie Carter is her name. Uh, she is famous for the Gallagher, Girl, Gallagher Girls and High Society YA novels, but she's going to bump up, and she has an all-new adult spy rom-com that uh, is out August the 8th, and she will be at Foolish Things Coffee on that date. Uh, Magic City Books is presenting a signing, uh, ticketed signing event on that day okay all right well um if you are 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 are, are hungry uh we do a review of fix and soul kitchen which opened uh the uh, first of june uh in downtown tulsa it's um the third uh restaurant uh of this name and the first one to open outside of uh california uh kevin johnson former NBA star and former mayor of Sacramento, California, is the person behind it. Um, if you if if you if you are into soul food and southern cooking and um, probably taking a lot of stuff home when you when you eat out, this is the mm -hmm. place to go. It is uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way: I am not a fan of okra. I like the way they do okra here. They do not deep fry it, though. They char it on a griddle, and it's got a kind of lemon pepper seasoning on it. It's remarkably good. And the collard greens, I could eat a bowl of those. I mean, it's that that kind of a place. So, And if you like Kool-Aid, they they'll, they'll have several variations of Kool-Aid. So you don't see that too many places uh, anymore. So look for that. Uh, in issues of the Tulsa World, uh, available at fine newsstands everywhere and online at tulsaworld.com. Well, for uh, Lydia and Jimmy, I think that will wrap us up for the day. Uh, thank you all for uh, putting up with us, and we wish you a good evening and a pleasant tomorrow. Behave. <laughs>